Right, I have um, I have done a, a video before on uh, uh, back surgery uh, microdiscectomy uh, L5S1 from following from a previous surgery. But uh, what I wanted to do is give a breakdown of my experience of everything from injury, um, pre-treatments, and uh, leading up to surgery. And I I am now like just over a week out from a revision surgery, so. I've got quite a lot of um, experience through this process and obviously this is England, the NHS, uh, specifically I'm in the West Midlands of England. Um, so yeah, here we go. So in 2020, when we all went into the COVID um, pandemic lockdown for the first time here in England, and before that, I was always a very avid gym user. Um, so I couldn't get to the gym, so I started doing my home workouts and I started doing a lot of more uh, running uh, around, around locally. And it's quite a hilly area. Um, and I started experiencing some back pain. And I wasn't running like stupid distances, you know, it was like I was building myself up to doing 10Ks, um, which for me was a lot, but for most people, for anyone to be concerned about back pain with it, they weren't bothered, they were like, oh, it's not going to be that, but it was definitely the uh, the running that was causing it. It was nothing too significant, it was just tightness in my back, you know, it would come, out, come and go, like, I'd have a rough couple of days and then you know, I'd be alright for a few weeks and blah blah, but eventually I kind of got sick of that and called my GP, couldn't get an appointment to see them, so it was telephone, an um, appointment was arranged with a physio, um, through the NHS and that they called me asked me some questions and then gave me access to these online this online portal uh, with these, these different stretches which felt good while they were doing them but it didn't resolve the actual issue that I was having uh, I was pretty inexperienced as well with anatomy and stuff I, I didn't really understand what was going on so I was just kind of doing what I was told at that point um, roll through until June 2021 so that probably was it's got to be a summer it's got it must have been the summer 2020 so roll through to the next uh, the next summer and the stretches I've been doing haven't really been working I was getting back into the gym then because one of the lockdowns at ease and you could do restrictions at ease um, so I started going back to the gym um, and I was still experiencing this back pain or ache aching back pain um, and I thought, well, I'll get book myself into a proper physio and I'll go private. Uh, so I did that and went to a session and I said, no, I don't think it was those that problem that you were given the stretches for before. That was more of a low back thing. This, we were going to target you. No. But yeah, it was either the first one targeted my low back and this one was going to target my mid back. Um, and they said, you need to strengthen your core. I asked about exercises like deadlifts and stuff, and they were like, yeah, yeah, you'd be fine to carry on, just just decrease the weight and decrease the end range. Um, so don't go down as low, but you know, keep your form good and lower weight, which I didn't question. Again, I wasn't really, I was just trusting. Um, so I went to the gym, um, it was probably, probably July. So maybe June I had this physio, and in July I was, I was in the gym and I was doing some deadlift. I think I'm pretty sure it was deadlift. It was either that or um, seated rows. It's definitely a back exercise, and I just felt something go in my leg. You know, I had knocked the weight down um, as well. You know, any time I was doing deadlift, I'd, I'd decrease the range like I was told. But obviously, something about I wasn't firing right. I wasn't something I didn't know I wasn't working properly. Um, and I felt this pop, and then it suddenly went down. I felt like water running down my leg. Um, which was worrying, but I just thought I'd pull the muscle because I felt it in my glute quite a lot. Um, I remember like the next couple of days, I was all right sitting down and, and and that kind of stuff. But it was like if I stood up from a seated position, it was just like an electric shock, just like through my back down my leg, and then I could I could walk it off and be like all right. So I just thought bloody hell, pull that muscle. Um, so I, I dealt with that for a couple of weeks and then in August called my GP and um, they referred me to the hospital when I said about what happened 
um, to the trauma and orthopaedics department. I went to that department in September of 21. Um, they ordered an MRI, which I had in October of 21. I got the results back in November of 2021. So that was quite a few months past. Um, during this time, it was manageable. Um, it was mainly just this sharp pain, like when I was extending my leg, like if I was putting the clutch in in the car or something like that. Um, but I was still able to carry on with my day-to-day -day activities. It was just getting more noticeable. But like if I took pain relief and stuff, it wasn't too bad. But I decided to, I was obviously not the gym on the head because I didn't know what to do. I was waiting on this, this advice. Um, so when I, one point to mention, when I went to the hospital the first time, um, I know, sorry, when I had my results of my MRI in November, they asked, they did say, um, you can have a steroid injection, which will be about two to three months, and we'll try and put you on a list for some physio. So I was like, okay, fine. So I was waiting on them. Um, now, roll through December and January, I decided just to take time off, like any exercises. I thought, no, I'm not going not gonna to risk making anything worse. I didn't know much about L5, S1, disc herniations or anything like that. I didn't have any experience with it, so I just thought I'd better leave this um, and rest. Well, keep the, I was told, keep doing your day-to-day your -day stuff um, and it should get better because it's not too big. Um, so keep doing that and we'll get this injection. That should calm, calm the area down and you'll be okay. So I was like, all right, fine. So I thought, well, it's going to be at least February. So if I just chill out over Christmas, chill out through through January, get the injection around February, and then I can start physical therapy. That's that's what I thought was going to happen. Um, that didn't happen. Uh, so roll through January, February uh, into March, and I hadn't heard anything. So I started calling uh, the hospital, saying what about this appointment, this uh, this steroid injection? I was told two to three months. I was told like, no, you know, you're looking like more like six months could be longer which was really disheartening no, disheartening sorry um so yeah it actually i actually didn't end up getting that first injection until may of 2022 um so you know when my initial injury um we're looking at what june july time 2021 we roll nearly a year down the line into may uh, when i did get the injection it was a cord left Fidural, which is that directly in the centre of my spine. Um, it didn't really do much for the pain, uh, not enough for it to be a viable treatment option. Um, and by this point, like I had been, I had started in like January or something. I think I went to a couple of chiropractor appointments. I'd had uh, massage appointments, and I'd been to like a spinal therapist who was like blasting my spine with like this good and, and doing different stretches and stuff. Um, he was okay and he did help a bit but nothing else was working for me you know I was doing at this point now I was starting to do more stretches I, was, I looked into the McKenzie method I was doing the big three um, you know trying to strengthen my core up I was stretching my hamstrings if I could you know that got in glute stretches figure four all that stuff that you should be doing um, or you told you should be doing at least I, I was doing or have been doing and I hadn't had any joy, so rolling to that injection in May, I uh, still didn't get any relief, and it got it got that bad that I was at the point now where I, it, I was limp, walking with a limp, you know, I couldn't sit down at all, uh, like driving the car was really difficult. Um, you know, my, my, my social life had gone, my quality of life was on the way out, I was just about making it through work, nine to five, and then on the weekends I was just doing nothing just trying to relax and rest and then just to get me through the next week so yeah they had that injection in may in june like the start of june he got he got to the point where i just couldn't take it anymore and i ended up coming out of work um i was back i went back to the hospital to see my consultant and i was like oh, i'm not getting any better and he was like right okay well it's been it's been like six months, so we'll get you another MRI. Um, at which point I questioned, like, I haven't really had any treatment. He said, well, you have. You've had the, the steroid injection. You've been taking painkillers and you've given it time, which I thought was a bit of a joke, but that's the way that they look at it. You know, a treatment option for, for this is time, it is patience. 
um, and it is also like your own like just taking ibuprofen and rest and walk or anything like that they will consider it as a treatment option so bear that in mind uh, and physio and stuff even if you're doing it yourself um, so they reordered for an MRI which was scheduled for July so now I'm off work in uh, for June 2022 um, and I couldn't I couldn't wait for to, I couldn't wait a month for an MRI a month for another set of results and then another month for another injection or something you know it was just like I, I can't do this I can't afford to be out of work for this long um, so I went to a private practice in July and paid around about twelve, thirteen hundred pound, I think, for a, a private injection. I had to have an, ass, a re, um, an assessment with them, and then they booked me in, and, and they could use the MRI because it coincided. Like, so I had the the NHS MRI booked in June for a, a date in July, and then they needed seven. The private practice needed seven days to request the data from that MRI. So, say it was the first of July that. Um, I had my appointment with the private practice. Then on the eighth of July, I, I, I could do it because if so, if the uh, the MRI was also on the first, uh, so they could request the data to be ported over, which worked out in my favour. So by the middle of July, I was getting a, a transfer needle nerve root injection on the L five S one, which is basically going to the the caudal is right down the middle, directly into the spine. The the transfer amino is to the side on whichever looking for directly for the nerve root. I'll take some uh, x ray guided imaging and uh, they'll poke around until they until they find where they want to be. I think they use some con maybe some contrast um, and then they'll inject you with a with a steroid and some anti inflammatories. That worked okay for a couple of days. Um, it did dial the pain down, but it soon crept back in. Um, so then I, I, I just had to go back to work and I started doing half days just because I couldn't afford to be out of work. Um, and I went back to, for a, re, a repeat appointment with the NHS to, from their MRI results. And I, when I went back, I said, listen, I've been to a private practice for, a, for another injection. I'm still not right. Uh, and they were like, right, okay, it's time to try surgery then. Which in a way was what I wanted to hear, but obviously there's risks with all that and you don't want to... You know, I, was th I wasn't even, no, I was 30. I, I, I was uh, 30 years old, didn't really want to be 30 with a back operation, you know, but I, everything I was trying wasn't working. So, okay, that was scheduled for September. Um, so I, I worked through that. Um, not much issue with the surgery, they'll tell you that the risks, which the main ones are, they might tear a little bit of the lining of the spinal fluid sac, which is the, ju the dural sac. Um, if that does happen, it's not really a big deal. You just have to lie flat. Um, other than that, the risks are obviously like they can they can damage the nerve a little bit more, the paralysis, but that is like super rare. Um, the biggest risks are like probably an increase in pain after your surgery and, and that tear and any like complications that you might get with surgery from anesthesia and stuff. Um, so I, might, I had my surgery in September, the 12th of September 2022. Um, and uh, I was kept in for the day because I did tear the, the dural sac. It was a small tear, so I had to lie flat for 24 hours because you just get some headaches. But it's, it's, not, it's not too severe, um, especially with the pain meds you're on anyway in the hospital. It, it's really not that bad. Um, that's just my experience. So I was released the next day and I didn't really ever get much relief from this from, from the, the leg pain. Like it was gone for a couple of days, but as soon as like because they, they what they do is is I'll they cut you open, they move the, the like kind of separate the muscle, drill a little bit of bone out, and then they'll remove the disc that's pressing on the nerve, which should release the nerve, and then you know, you, they bathe it with some anti inflammatory drugs. Um to try and calm the swelling down and then you're good to go. They say no bending, lifting, twisting, six weeks, um, which you have to be very stringent. We have no sitting down for more than 20 minutes. Um, well, that's not the information I had at the start, but the second time around I have. 
So no sitting, just sit down as little as possible. Like that's just the easiest thing to do because less pressure on your discs. So don't bother doing it. Um, so yeah, I, I went through September, you know, thinking it was just recovery pains from surgery. Um, then I got in, I had my repeat, my follow up appointments, and it was like oh, I'm not feeling any better. Like my legs still hurting. I like, oh, should I should calm down. Then eight weeks, I was like, I still, my legs still really hurting, like I'm struggling, I can't, I've tried to go back to work and I just can't, I can't do it, like it's just too painful. And they're like, well, okay, let's get another injection to calm the nerve down, which they did in November of 2021. Um, so that was another transfer amenal nerve root, so it was direct into the area and it did jack, um, just nothing at all. Um, so then, Saw the year out. Oh no, I didn't. Sorry, in Dece I, I requested a, a follow up appointment with my consultant in December. Uh, he was away, so I saw uh, an, another attending consultant, and he said, "Like, well, you've had an injection, you had the surgery, it's still not calmed down. Get another MRI." And that was ordered for January twenty twenty three. So I went for that and got the results back at the end of January twenty twenty three. Um. Yeah. Sorry, I've got some notes written down. As I went to that at the end of January, I got the results back for that, and it was still there's a small disc bulge on the same the same place, same size, impinging the nerve. Now I had got a little bit better. I have to say this: like before surgery, it was just pins and needles all the way down my leg into my foot. You know, from from the first minute I got out of bed to you know that was it all day. Um, and it increased throughout the day. Always four, between four and five o'clock was always the worst. But any like any amount, any amount of pressure on that disc just made it worse. So this going back into for a second set so they said like well, we're pointing to do another injection. Um, we'll, we'll just do a revision surgery. So I was like right, okay, fine. They scheduled that for the twenty sixth of February, 26th, 27th of February. My my record of time has dissolved. Um, so now going into this second surgery, I was able to walk a bit further. It was um, it was more like just general dull ache in my leg from like from my uh, hip area down into my knee. There was no pins and needles anymore, um, so that was good. And I didn't get that sharp pain when I stood up or anything like that. So it was just progressive throughout the day. Any like prolonged pressure on that disc, and I've been trying decompression tables. I've got an inversion table. I've been going to physio, doing all the nerve glides still, you know, all the stretching, all the strengthening. I've been doing it all in this, so in the, in the four, five months the, between the surgery and uh, and the second, the first and the second surgery, I haven't just been, you know, I didn't go back to doing anything stupid. I wasn't bending, lifting, twisting off the get go. Something just happened. Either they didn't get all the, the disc the first time or something happened really quickly because I just never felt the relief. So going into the second surgery, um, I was told when I when I woke up, again, the surgery is pretty easy. They, um, both times that they'll get you in, they uh, you have to do a pre-op assessment. So they'll do an MRSA swab, uh, maybe a COVID test, check some bloods. That's pretty okay as long as you're all right with needles and stuff. And then they schedule your date. Um, and then when you get your date, uh, you go in, uh, you'll probably be in early. Um, the, the, my, both of mine have been as inpatient. So I know most people say that you're always an outpatient, you have it done and then a couple of hours later you're sent home. Mine haven't been like that. So the first one was because of the dural tear. This time was different. Um, so I hadn't, you, you go in, they, you get an assessment with the anesthesiologist, or I think that's what they're called. And then you are, um, before you know it, you know, you you go in into the pre-holding the the pre area for theatre, you change into a gown, give you some lovely paper underpants, put your stockings on, give you a wristband or drawer on your back, um, and checking your blood pressure, and checking your airwaves, asking you the same questions 10 times, make sure you're the right person, um, and that you're okay to go ahead with it. Um, and then you will have your cannula put in. Mine was in my hand both times. Um, so you have that. They, they 
give you the good drugs, you draw some uh, oxygen in and then it's lights out. You wake up, you'll have a bit of discomfort in your back, they'll ask you how you feel. Um, and you just, if you're in pain, you, you know, you say you're in pain, they'll either give you some um, something in your IV that's still in, or they'll squirt some morphine, some or a morph in your, in your gob. Um, so that was exactly the same first time as it was second. Um, then you'll get wheeled back out onto the ward. This time, after about three or four hours, the physio came around and got me up. Like I log rolled to my side, stood up, walked around, which was surprising because I didn't have that. The surgeon came round shortly after that and said, uh, asked me if I'd been up and I said yes. And they said, right, well, the surgery went well. Um, what they had, they had removed a bit more bone, they removed the, the disc herniation and there was some scar tissue adhering between the, the herniation and the bone, I believe, or something like that. It was either the bone or the disc and the bone or the disc and the nerve, I can't I can't remember. It was between one of the bone and nerve, sorry, or nerve and disc. I can't remember which one, but they removed that. So I was like, okay, fine. Um, I got released home the next day. Um, the, the night of it, it was pretty rough. They did tell me this is a revision surgery, you're gonna feel worse. It's gonna, because we've gone through scar tissue, it's gonna hurt worse. I was like, okay, fine, whatever. And they were right, it did. My back was super achy. I couldn't get in any comfortable position at all. Um, all the drugs the first night in hospital. Um, so things that, and now I'm a week out, I'm doing a lot better, I'm, I'm walking quite a bit. This is the longest I've sat down actually to record this. So I'll be getting up and going, walk, moving around in a minute. Um, but it hasn't been too bad this time. You know, the, I've still got a bit of leg pain but it's very faint it's like if i stretch out because my back's still swollen and inflamed um i've been off painkillers for around four days you know i took them for maybe four days um and and two of those days and sorry and one of the, those four days that i took them it was just at night anyway i took or maybe no i might have been on longer than that i can't i can't remember but time was all blurred into one but i'm, I'm off them now I'm walking a decent amount, like at least 1,500, 2,000 steps per walk, trying to do a couple of them. Uh, yeah, it hasn't been too bad. I'm staying off work for four weeks minimum, and then I might do a phase return. Uh, so, yeah, this is that's all my story. So if anyone needs any advice or help with anything, you know, shout up. Um, I'd, I'd happily speak to them. Um, and try and help them through it, you know, because it's a miserable, lonely, isolated place to be. Um, you feel like you're never going to get your life back. Um, I know I'm not out of the woods yet, but I'm, I'm hoping that, fingers crossed, that this year is going to be a healing year, not a hurting year. Um, so, yeah, if anyone needs anything, let me know.